This video shows you how to evaluate real integrals using complex techniques, in particular the residue theorem and a little bit of limits. This is one of my favorite integrals of all time. In a basic calculus class, you probably have to remember that this thing, this integral, is actually making use of none other than a trig substitution. And in particular, it's the limit as r goes to infinity of the arc tangent of x between minus r and r. And of course, that's equal to what? We have no idea. A little bit of plotting will remind us that the arc tangent looks a bit like this and has a limit at pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. And so then this whole thing's pi. Of course, if you remember your trig substitutions, great. If you don't, what can you do? And what if instead of that dx I were to write, I don't know, e to the x dx, or not, well, probably not that, sine of x dx or something like that. Gosh, you'd be in trouble. But it turns out that contour integrals can really make a nice dent in this problem. But you have to change your perspective a little bit. Let's think for a moment about the integral of dz over 1 plus z squared. If I plot this in the complex plane, this function has two poles, one pole at minus i and one pole at plus i. Why is that? Oh, well, that's because I factored the denominator. Like so. So those are those two poles. Now, the integral we're interested in is along the real axis. That's the integral we want. Does not look like a simple closed curve to me at all. However, we can make it into a simple closed curve by turning it into a, like a D-shaped region like so. Now it's a simple closed curve that's partly something we want and partly something we don't. Let's make this guy positively oriented and make this r and this minus r. Then you will notice that the integral we wanted is really what ends up happening, the blue path, and the integral we don't want is this green thing. If we can somehow argue that the green thing doesn't matter in some fashion, then in fact, the real integral will be equal to the complex integral. So, first of all, by the residue theorem, the integral along this blue path followed by this green path provided we're far enough out there, but really not mattering what the r is, by the residue theorem, that's 2 pi i times the residue of our function at z equals i. Well, that's not so hard to compute. Because, in particular, that is simply that. Why is it? Well, because that is involving, that's the residue at this particular guy here. So, essentially, we pop that z equals i into the other part of the expression, and off we go. This gives us, oh wait, uh, this simplifies because I have a 2i in the numerator, and now I have two i's in the denominators, so that's just pi. Okay. On the other hand, not by the residue theorem, this is equal to the integral for, uh, along the blue path, and I'm going to write it out as with z's for the moment and integral of the green path. This is just additivity of the integral. 
the thing to realize is this first guy is integral minus r to r dx because it's purely real. Okay, so clearly the limit as r goes to infinity is not going to change matters provided this second guy here, provided that behaves itself. Okay, so let's let's explore what that is. We're going to investigate this as r goes to infinity. Well, I know of no other way to deal with this integral except by parameterizing it. So let's let z equals r e to the i theta for r constant and theta between 0 and pi. So substituting that in, now we get this kind of integral. That's the dz. And here is the denominator. OK, now I'm not really relishing the idea of computing this integral directly. I guess a substitution would probably take care of it. but putting it back into the original form, and then I'd have to deal with arctans. I don't want to do that. Oops, and this is not the 2 pi. OK, I'm really interested in the limit of this. The limit, as r goes to infinity, of this quantity. That's really what I'm interested in. Now. Assuming limits play well with integrals, and that works when the integrands are continuous, you have to fight quite hard to get this to work in more general settings, but no problems here. You'll notice in magnitude, that 1 in the denominator doesn't really matter as r gets big. So this quantity here becomes something that looks like, uh, well, I guess it looks like limit as r goes to infinity of I r e to the i theta d theta r squared e to the 2i theta. It's best to really think that what I'm doing here is I'm really actually dealing with absolute values. In which case, that's now more a bit legitimate. And I suppose you could take the d thetas out if you cared. OK, well, given all that, We can do some simplification now. First off, you will notice that the numerator there, uh, the numerator, the i doesn't matter, and the e to the i theta over e to the 2i theta, all of that's just 1 over r d theta, which at the end of the day is 2 pi over r. which fortunately for us, zero. So provided r goes to infinity, then in fact this, this green guy right here goes to zero. So therefore,
And that's the end of the story. Now, whenever you want to compute a real valued integral that looks like it might have some pretty well-defined poles, you could do this kind of calculation. However, you must be very careful to justify this limit calculation on whatever parts of the path you don't want. So these, this green segment here, you need to be kind of careful. Now, it turns out it didn't actually matter whether we took the upper path here or if we had taken instead something down, down here. It turns out that that actually doesn't matter for this particular integral, although it does sometimes matter in other cases. So you need to be careful and mindful of that and check the limits to make sure that they really do go to zero on the portions of the integral you don't want.